these are the people that help me and they can definitely help you guys too so please check them all out hey everyone i'm back again today to try and help you get better prints uh that's my goal in making videos so i want everyone to get really good prints so one thing I noticed as I was printing more and more terrain is that on flat surfaces, the flat parts of my terrain and certain other parts, I would get really, really tiny little holes, little areas where there was kind of no extrusion it looked like. And two things. One, I accepted it as it's really kind of minuscule, not that big a deal, easily filled in. And that's just life with an FDM printer. It's not going to print perfectly all the time. And Number two, when I got my second FDM printer, my Lotmax, which, which was also giving me great prints, it was doing the exact same thing. Sometimes on these flat surfaces, I'd see little holes where there wasn't material. So I figured that must just be what it is because my profile is very tweaked. Most of my prints came out nearly perfectly. I'm as good as I've seen anyone on FDM. So I thought it is what it is. Then as I start printing, you know, I print 24 seven. As I started printing more and more terrain pieces, what I started to notice was all those little holes would always appear on the flattest surfaces. And I think I really started noticing when I printed a lot of City of Tarak, because the City of Tarak pieces, uh, you know, have cobblestone floors, but it's mostly a large flat area inside, or they have wooden floors inside, so a nice large flat area inside. And I was noticing those little holes are starting to really bug me. Um, when I printed up my, uh, the bigger pieces of the Goblin Grotto, you know, it's not that obvious, but there's a couple of tiny little holes in it. So it's really bothering me. So after a while, I figured, let me really dig into this and see what's happening because my machines are extruding perfectly. My, my prints look, you know, coming up basically perfect, except holes somewhere. It didn't really make sense to me. There was nothing to calibrate. I had two machines doing basically the same thing. So that's what really made me start thinking about it. When I only had one machine, I just thought it is what it is. So um, you guys know some of my theories on how to print better are a little contrarian to what other YouTubers or articles say. And here, here comes another one because when I was watching, I watched basically every video made on 3D printing before I started and that's how I learned to do all this. One of the things, there was a general consensus that when it comes to your infill settings on terrain, especially you never want to go above 20%. Why? Because if you go above that, you start to fill in the whole model with infill. So it comes heavy, clunky, you're using a lot more material, it takes more time. And strength in the prints comes from the number of perimeter walls you have, makes a print strong. So if you're worried about strength, a lot of people, that's where the, the wisdom came from. Hey, you don't need infill for strength. That's a myth. And I agree with that part. But what people didn't talk about was when you're printing a larger, flatter surface, higher infill percentage gives you a better print. So without looking at me too much, we're going to jump right into Cura. So anyone who likes the video super duper short, let me just break it down here for you and then we'll go in and you'll see why. I now recommend, unless the piece is super duper big, I go my info percentage at least 50% on every terrain print and I get much better results from it, 50 to 60%. Now, if you have five more minutes, stick around, we're going to jump into Cura. I'm going to show you exactly why that is and why the conventional wisdom of you shouldn't go above 20% infill on your, on your prints, I think it's just actually dead wrong, especially if you're like me and you want really high quality prints, infill higher. There's another way to do this also with uh, top layer settings, but it ends up resulting the same way in terms of extra material and extra time, so it doesn't matter. So we're gonna do it with infill percentage. So stay tuned, let's jump into Cura. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about and I hope that in the end it gets you better prints, thanks. So what we're looking at here in Cura is a piece from City of Tarak. You can see that the infill percentage is set at just 10% there, infill density, 10%. So I've sliced it. Now let's look at the preview and you're going to see why I think it's important to ramp up your infill percentage. If you want that cobblestone floor in there and the floor to the right uh, outside the little house piece, let's break it down by layer. You can see here's what infill at 10% looks like. Yeah, it's it's going to strengthen the model, but it's not overkill. You're not using too much material, right? You're pretty happy with that infill. But let's go up. Let's see what happens as this model actually prints. So you can see the floor on the right is starting to print. But look what it's printing over that 10% infill, right? Which means it's basically that whole floor 
even though it's made up of six to eight layers as it goes up, it's all printing over huge gaps. When at 10% infill, you're basically your flat surfaces that print on top of that are basically all overhangs. So it's easy with overhangs like that to get. Let's see, look at this coming up right now. It's coming up all overhang. So it's easy if some of that material doesn't bridge properly. It's really easy. Now I saw this and I understood, oh my God, this is why I'm getting some small holes on that surface because that whole entire floor is one huge bridge basically, you know, supported every, you know, few millimeters by another line. So you can see that'd be very easy for material on, on a FDM printer. Obviously they don't all bridge exactly perfectly no matter how, because my end or my lot max are both dialed in printing great. And I still get those little holes on those surfaces due to that infill percentage. Now, in the walls and stuff, it doesn't matter because you're going up, you know, and that, that's by uh, inner and outer walls. It's, it doesn't, plus that part of the model, if it had little holes on it, you're not going to see it because that, that's going to be covered by another layer. But those floor layers, that's exactly what I was talking about where I started noticing some little holes now and then. Not a ton, but enough to bother me. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, move this infill setting up to 50%. And I'll re-slice the model. And what you're going to see at 50%, and, and although I, I find this a little quirky myself, at 50% basically looks like 100%, you know, after the model's sliced, in that it's going to almost fill in all the crevices. And I, and I think that's due to the uh, infill line distance, the width, and all that other things. It effectively becomes almost 100%. Now, on a model like this, it's only, you know, this is a, 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 a print that takes you know almost two days it only adds a couple hours on so it's not that big a deal and you can see it's not really going to add so the the part underneath the floor on the left becomes almost solid as you'll see when i break down these layers but that's not so bad the model's is going to be a little heavier it's going to use a little more material but it's going to print out without any of those little holes on the surface that were driving me absolutely nuts uh, you know, on, on the interior floor and on that exterior floor, because now instead of printing over overhangs, you're going to see that they're printing over basically solid material. So there's no, there's nothing to quote unquote, you know, kind of fall through and leave room for a little hole there. So, you know, since I discovered this, I've been printing everything at 50 to 60% infill and my prints were, were great before, you know, you guys saw lots of pictures of them, but now they're even better because now, now I have even less cleanup to do. So yes, does a print like this take three, four hours longer? Sure. And is it slightly heavier now? And does it cost me maybe 10 or 15 cents more in filament? Sure. But it's less post-processing. I get a model that looks better. Let's look at the preview now and we'll see, see what happens. And uh, to me, it's totally worth it for a little bit extra time and, and a few cents extra money. I'd, I'd much rather have, obviously, a better print. So now when we break this down, you can see those floor layers now printing on almost solid material so you're not going to have there's not this giant overhangs printing anymore you're not going to have those holes so that's basically it using this trick of, of upping your infill percentage to get better prints i know it goes contrary to what everyone else says but i think if you want the highest quality prints which is what i'm after then if you don't mind the extra time a few extra pennies then you should go with a higher infill percentage on pieces like this and you will get better prints and i'm gonna i'm gonna show you some pics of my recent terrain so you can see what stuff looks like with with that infill filled in all right thanks for watching hope you learned hope you like hope you subscribe thanks everybody so remember we i hopefully you we want quality over speed we want less post-processing we want better prints that when we paint up they're going to look better and i think these uh these are proof is in the pudding enjoy